Right now, Republicans are continuing to work to try to justify their impeachment inquiry, but the question is whether they've done anything to substantiate their allegations that the president did something wrong. I want to bring in one of the lawmakers who's been in that room all morning, member of the House Oversight Committee, Florida Democratic Congressman Jared Moskowitz. Hey, thanks for uh, dipping out for us, and, and I wonder how you would characterize as a trained lawyer, as well as a member of Congress, what uh, James Comer and other Republicans presented today that, that they call evidence. So thanks, Chris, for having me. So this has been an unmitigated disaster for Chairman Comer. Chairman Comer has committed what I would call impeachment hearing malpractice. Uh, he has violated the first rule, which is know what your witnesses are going to say. His star witness, his first witness, Professor Turley, said in his opening statement that there is no evidence to impeach Joe Biden. Full stop. That's it. The rest of the hearing doesn't matter. It's been a lot of regurgitation of the last nine months of these hearings. It's the you know, second season of the Real House Republicans of Oversight, which is the worst TV drama on television. But the bombshell out of this hearing is that James Comer's own witness said no evidence to impeach Joe Biden. And in fact, Congressman, I actually went on a number of conservative websites. I wanted to see how they viewed the hearing so far. And for example, the Washington Times, no friend of Joe Biden, acknowledges top legal and tax experts testified it's premature to impeach President Biden. Take a listen to this. I am not here today to even suggest that there was corruption, fraud, or any wrongdoing. In my opinion, more information needs to be gathered and assessed before I would make such an assessment. So I think generally we can say nothing yet, but Republicans will argue that's the whole point. They say it's enough to investigate, enough questions to continue looking into Hunter Biden's activity and see if it leads to his dad. Is that a legitimate use of the committee that you serve on? Well, look, no, that's a lie. And the reason it's a lie is we know they filed articles of impeachment on Joe Biden in 2021, two weeks after January 6th. Marjorie Taylor Greene filed articles of impeachment on Joe Biden before they had any hearings, before they had any of this so-called evidence. Then they were followed up by multiple other Republicans filing articles of impeachment in the Donald Trump friend Olympics, where they're all trying to get a, an invite to, to Mar-a-Lago to impress Donald Trump. Right? This is all about the fact that Donald Trump has two impeachments, four indictments. Right? He is winning in the category of corrupt presidents. That's why we're having this, because he has beamed those instructions down to my colleagues on Truth Social that he wants these hearings because he wants to muddy the water uh, on Joe Biden. The problem is there's just no mud. Uh, and so that's why these hearings have just been a disaster for James Comer. I want to ask you about a possible government shutdown because that's what this split screen is. You know, on one hand, you have this inquiry. On the other hand, the possibility, the very real possibility that this is all going to go badly. So there's this group of conservative Republicans, I think maybe about 10, a few more maybe. They are defiant, even as other House Republicans are trying to appease the hard right. They've added some amendments, I'm sure you know this, to the four individual spending bills. One, for example, would reduce the salary of Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin to one dollar. He is, of course, the first black man to hold that post. So given what kind of activity there is, do you see anything at this point that could avert a shutdown? No, Chris, and thanks for asking about that. I'm really afraid for the American people that we're going to see a shutdown, right? We're going to see this affect people's lives on an everyday basis because it's going to affect, you know, travel with uh, the FAA. It's going to affect people's Social Security. It's going to affect people's benefits under WIC. I mean, it's going to affect senior citizens, our veterans. It's going to affect health care. And this is all because they're fighting amongst themselves. I mean, the speaker tried yesterday to try to blame Joe Biden. It, my deep concern with that, of course, is anyone who has studied civics knows the executive branch doesn't run the legislative branch, which is Congress. And if that's what they think, we're in deeper trouble than I think I even uh, thought at the beginning of this. And so I'm deeply concerned. I think we're going to be shut down. I think the question really just now is how long are going to we be shut down until they stop fighting amongst themselves? This is an inner Republican fight between MAGA members and even more extreme MAGA members. The Senate's passing things on a bipartisan basis. I'm willing to work with my colleagues. Right? I'm willing to look at things. I have no problem with government spending less. The American people are spending less. But let's come up with reasonable solutions to get to that. Right now, they're not even engaging us because they're so worried about working with the Democrats and how that's going to make them look weak. That's not weak. It's strength. 
to work on a bipartisan basis. But do you think a shutdown will give them the motivation to suddenly start working with you guys? No, I, I mean, I, I don't. I mean, it's unclear at, at the moment, I think. You know, they're, they're going to turn on a messaging war once this shuts down. They're going to try to blame Joe Biden for their Republican MAGA-led shutdown, right? And this will become a messaging war for the next couple of weeks. I mean, at some couple point in weeks? time, the solution on the House will have Oh, listen, I mean, the way things are leaking out of the Republican conference, where members are fighting amongst themselves, sniping at each other, I mean, it's getting pretty nasty on, on the other side. And so, yeah, I think, I think, Chris, unfortunately, if we shut down, it's going to be prolonged. Congressman Jared Moskowitz, thank you so much for stepping out of the hearing and, and taking time to talk to us. Appreciate it.